Hi and welcome to my video of a homemade astrophotography tracking mount that uses a stepper motor and a Linny stepper programmable driver. The reason behind building this mount was that my main telescope is on a homemade equatorial fork mount which weighs approximately 100 kilograms so set up time is about half an hour whereas with this mount it can be uh, set up and tracking, taking pictures in less than five minutes, it's so simple. This was the original camera mount that I made, the, the first version. Um, I wasn't too happy with it because the polar alignment scope isn't exactly on the same axis as the camera's turning on. Now, you'll see that the modified one, the polar alignment scope, slides inside the hollow tube that the camera turns on so you know that your polar alignment is going to be perfect. Also, this one's just sat on a, a cheap tripod. My first mount I made is on a, an old equatorial mount that's much more stable and much easier to set up than, uh, than a cheap tripod that does tend to move about quite a lot. Right, we're going to have a look at, at this modified mount. I've just set up a small laser collimator to, to show how the mount works. What it does is, as the stars move from west to east, and that's in the northern hemisphere, then the mount turns at exactly the same speed, but in the opposite direction as the Earth's turning. So, wherever you point the camera, the mount turns on this axis and tracks the stars. Polar alignment's done by looking through the polar alignment scope. With the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia in the correct orientation, then it's as simple as putting Polaris, which is the North Star, very close to the Celestial Pole. You put it in that little circle on there. That's it, polar alignment's done. Uh, the mount was quite easy to make. It's basically just a, an aluminium project box with a few parts that I've machined on my lathe and then anodized myself at home in, in my garage. Uh, the battery that I run it from, it's a 4200 milliamp hour battery. The stepper driver is set to run at about 200 milliamps. So this tiny battery will give me about 21 hours of picture taking. And to say most of your exposures are only going to be a maximum of five minutes, that's, that's quite a lot of pictures. I've put in a couple of LEDs, they're, they're not just for fancy, they're trouble with setting stuff up to, to take pictures of stars as it's usually very dark. Uh, this LED on the rear here, that helps you see the, uh, the writing on the polar scope because when it's dark none of that shows up so that LED reflects a bit of light back off your face and actually inside the polar scope, which makes it much easier to set up. And uh, this LED on the front, that just shines up onto your camera so you can see when you're attaching everything together. The second switch is the switch that makes it do its thing. That sets the stepper driver, uh, the stepper motor turning. Right, let's have a look inside. Um, right, pointer. That's the main drive gear. That's a 73 tooth worm gear. Um, that is a 64 to 1 reducing gear head. There's our stepper motor. It's a 1.8 degree 200 step per revolution. Um, I've just got a, a couple of switches there. There's a 5 volt voltage regulator because the stepper driver needs 5 volts. Um, 
there's the programmable pick. On here I've got a 5 volt feed and an earth, but the other three pins here are written into the code, so you've got a direction pin, so if you're in the southern hemisphere, or if you're using this on a telescope mount and you want to be able to reverse your scope, then you would use a direction pin. There's also a run pin and a speed pin. Uh, Roman Black, who's written the software for the stepper driver, um, has enabled it to have two speeds. So you can have your track speed and a fast slew if you wanted to move your scope quickly to another point. Right, that's tracking now. I think you can see that stepper motor is turning. That's stepping at about 15 milliseconds per step. Now with the gear ratio I've got, it's 4,672 to 1. So, the stepper motor has to step 5.6 million times to do one revolution of this gear. Each step is about 2.3 arc seconds so it's a really high resolution and really accurate. The software has been written to be as accurate as a digital watch. Um, these two resistors can be tuned for a specific motor. These are the ones that supply power to the motor. I've, I'm using 5 ohm resistors so that they're setting the power to about 200 milliamps. So if you've got a larger motor, you could, um, I think you can run up to 1.5 amps. So, but I wanted it to be really efficient. Right, I'm just going to show you uh, a quick look at the software now. Um, I've actually written a small program in Excel that I'll post links for where all these can be found that will work out the step timing for any given gear ratio that you want to use. Um, it's a very simple equation. We know exactly how long it takes for the Earth to do one rotation. That's 86,164.1 seconds. If we divide that by our gear ratio, which you would input into there, whichever, whatever gear ratio you're using, and then divide that by the micro steps the stepper motor does, which is 1200, then it will give us an exact step timing to program into our pick that's on board the stepper driver. Now my gear ratio is 4672 to 1, so if we just hit enter now that will generate the step timing, you can see that's 15 milliseconds. So from there we can transfer that into the telescope driver code that Roman Black's written He's written this so that it will drive any telescope, um, whatever gear ratios you're using, all you need to do is input the step timing that you require, which can be worked out from the Excel program. Um, is put in your two variables, those are your two speeds. You have your slow speed, which is your track speed, the larger number. The smaller number, the faster the stepper motor will step. So the smaller number there is your slew speed. I've already typed my desired frequency into there, which is 15368882. The other variable that is put in is you can change the crystal XTAL that you're using on your stepper driver. Um, mine's a 20 megahertz, but you, you could use whatever you wanted. Um, and you can change that variable in there so it will still calculate perfectly on the XTAL frequency that you're using. Then all you do from there is build the program, create your hex file and flash it onto the chip. It's as simple as that. This is a, a picture of the Andromeda galaxy that I took the other night so you can see from that that it's 
and it's working very well indeed. Uh, that's just taken with this standard 55mm, not so great quality lens that comes with the camera. So, you know, with the larger lens, you could get much better results. These are just a, a couple of the websites that have all the information that you need. There's romanblack.com, he's the uh, creator of the linear stepper driver and who wrote the software for it. Uh, picklist.com, they um, are in charge of retailing the driver. There's all the open source software on there so it's all free and anybody can modify it for whatever need they want. And there's also Backyard EOS dot com which is the photo capture software which I use which anybody who's got a Canon EOS it's really remarkable what you can do with that thanks for watching